storm going on here. It's insanely cold, absolutely insanely cold, and I don't have enough gas to get to the next gas station. The best thing I can do is uh, go for it, see what happens, and hitchhike with the gas can from there. Keep you posted. Hi, this is Terry Fossum. I recently returned from a 6,000 mile solo journey from Spokane, Washington up into the Arctic Circle. Had some incredible adventures along the way, met some phenomenal people, and had an absolute blast. This video is put together just for my friends and family, just to give you some highlights of that trip. I hope you enjoy it, and I'm glad you're going to be able to come on this journey with me. All right, here we are, finally starting at the Cassier Highway. There's my truck, such as, it, such as it looks right now. Let's hope it looks the same later on. Pretty excited to get on this uh, leg of the journey, finally. So there's the ferry crossing that I get to do. I'm going into Inuvit, just south of uh, Fort McPherson. The government runs this ferry. It's free of charge. Kind of cool. All right, so uh, made it to Inuvit. Say hi. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I don't know even know if you can hear through this uh, engine in the background, but we're heading out through the Delta. Out from the Unit. Say hi. breeze died down and the bugs are just thick but this is what I came for listen not a sound except for the motor barely fading off in the distance and the mosquitoes the flies the trickling of the water and this is what I'll be hearing for the next however long Doing a little solo backpacking in the Arctic Circle. I love it. That uh, sun you see is at 10:30 at night. So it's 5:45 in the morning. Didn't get much sleep last night. That wind was just was just terrible all night long. I doubt they'll be coming to pick me up today. Now, okay, and I'm up pretty high on the hills, and maybe it's not as bad down below. But I can't see them uh, doing a boat today on the water, much less the airplane trip uh, back. 6.45 in the morning, and I'm uh, hiking out on the Arctic tundra. Boy, I stopped to show you these pretty flowers, but I'm being swarmed by, again, well, literally hundreds of mosquitoes. Boy, if you stop for just a second, they're hungry. They've been uh, without food for too long now, and they don't have that long to live. Growing season is so short, the unfrozen season is just so incredibly short that everything has to make the best it can while it can. Yeah, it's getting really marshy. I'm going to have to cut off a different direction here. I'm going to be up to my waist. Look at it. Can you even see those? Hundreds of them. And they're drafting right behind me in the breeze. And of course hitting me whenever they can. Right, made it to Tuktoyuk. As far north as I'm going to be going. Most part, uh, traditional whale, whaling village. Right, made it to the Arctic Ocean. Just uh, stepped my dirty feet in there, and uh, it's not as cold as you think. But my God, made it. We we're at the uh, ice house. The Took to yep took. Did I say decently? Absolutely, it's uh, perfectly. Yes, I love perfect. Yeah. So Is it ice house. Yeah, like the yak. Okay, so here we are. How many feet below the ground? It is thirty feet into the permafrost. Thirty feet into the permafrost. And I don't know if you can see this. There we go. Focused on it. And beautiful. I mean, everything's just frozen, absolute solid. What uh, what temperature, Dander? Do you think? It's about minus twelve Celsius. About minus twelve Celsius, which comes out in Fahrenheit to be really cold. <laughs> so. Wow. 
Wow, and it's crazy. It's how many corridors? Three corridors. Uh huh. Uh, and about seven, eight cubicles, eight rooms in each corridor, and that. Wow. Would you mind going in, sh shining on one of the, the rooms? Look inside one of the rooms. Sweet. Okay, so there's one of the rooms. Pretty good size, really. And uh, yeah, stuff just stays frozen down here forever. So we're gonna mess with one of the other tourists and lock them down here. <laughs> all right, bad plan. All right. All right. Our good buddy John is taking us on this extremely cool jet boat. Wait, there we go. All right, there we go. Feel that million dollar smile. This is about the uh, farthest we can go up this creek because it's too shallow. This is uh, fresh water right here. We call this creek Water Creek where people will get water from this place. Oh, really? oh right on. Yeah. Well, we gotta try some then, eh? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> All right, so we're out on the hunting trip now. We've got Drew. You, up? There you go. You saw him on the boat before. Yeah. We've got Matt. Hello. New arrival. Of, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> new arrival of the family, yeah. but he's uh, he's local. Yeah. He just like went to. Uh, I got uh, lost in uh, Nunavut and then uh, <laughs> Toronto. Now I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing his New York uh, yeah. paraphernalia. All right, you know this guy, Kylick. Kylick. Yeah. There you go. Kylick. Taking the tourist Kylick. out for a real good show. <laughs> that scares me when he says it like that. Midnight. Well, <laughs> it's midnight over there and yeah. it's uh, only well, that's 11 right. over, It's only 11 over this way. There's just caribou and for miles and miles. They go on forever. Thousands of them. The Inuit people are allowed by the Canadian government to hunt the caribou. And even though I'm not a hunter myself, I respect that they do it for food. And the caribou that they're getting today will feed. Ah, uh, look at the shift in the caribou. Shell Drew got in front of them. Yeah, I just heard the shot. They're hunting for food to feed their families and some of the rest of their tribe. So I respect that. It's a grizzly bear out there. Creepiest. There he is. Like there might be one one. Now the only grass. So he was following the caribou, but now he's following us. He knows we got lots of tasty vittles. We'll get these things cleaned up in the truck, hopefully. We gotta make him track right for us. Bam. I don't know if you can hear this right now. I'm at the uh, Yukon border coming out of the Northwest Territories. They just dropped me off in my truck, and we've got a full on Arctic windstorm going on here. It's insanely cold, absolutely insanely cold, and I don't have enough gas to get to the next gas station because the guy was supposed to split his gas can with me, and I guess it's time to one of the guys with us. So he took all the gas. Now, the only blessing is. This wind is coming from behind me, it's a tailwind. So, decent odds, no, it's not decent odds, but I might be able to make it. So, best thing I can do is uh, go for it, see what happens, and hitchhike with the gas can from there. Keep you posted.
Okay, let's add to that uh, last one. I haven't slept all night. It's afternoon. I'm not sure what time, because I'm not sure what time zone this is. Uh, I haven't eaten, and uh, I can't find my wallet. So uh, I think I'm just going to try heading down the road and see what happens, see if I make it. If I make it, you know, I'll just start looking around. Maybe my wallet's in here somewhere. Uh, if I can't, I'll camp wherever I run out of gas um, and search the truck, see if I can find my wallet. And that's all I can do. So I got my cliff bar, I got my water bottle so I can rehydrate, get some uh, energy in me, and uh, let's keep trucking. Well, good morning. I think it's Wednesday, I really don't know. Welcome to my camp. I made it out of the Yukon, and I'm back here at Dawson, excuse me, into the Yukon, and I'm back here at Dawson City, uh, Yukon. At a campground here, here's my shelter. Love it. It's wonderful. It's raining, raining like a son of a gun. Just uh, got a little respite right now, but the shelter's working phenomenal. You know, I laughed at myself for bringing a uh, lantern into the land of the midnight sun, but right now, it's warm, so it's nice. All my warm clothes are nasty. Most of them uh, we're wearing either myself or one of the uh, Inuit during the, uh, the cleaning and the carrying of all that caribou, so they're just plain bloody. And uh, speaking of that, <clears throat> so you see this, I mean, really... Uh, a uh, deep, fast-moving stream, we'll call it a stream, it's more like a river right now, but it's pretty narrow, so we'll go with stream. <clears throat> well, last night it was a stream, and uh, so too, I, I took my coat and the pair of blue jeans that I was wearing, both that were just soaked with blood, uh, my gun strap, and put them in the stream under uh, some rocks to help uh, loosen up some of that, that blood uh, before I, I don't know, try to scrub down the stuff, I guess. And that's when it was just a tiny little stream. And I, could, I just walked right out there in my boots in the middle. And uh, yeah, put the stuff under a rock, no problem at all. I wake up this morning to this. Like, oh my God. And it's, you can see how muddy it is. You can't see anything down there. So I can't see my coat, my blue jeans, the strap, nothing. It's uh, probably washed away. And, uh, but, so I stuck on some shorts and I had some flip flops, thankfully, uh, that strapped on and went out there and it's cold oh my god it's cold but I felt around with my feet until I found all those items and brought them up to the surface and was able to get them in took a good long double shower last night get some of that blood off me and uh, <laughs> so I was driving all day bloody as could be I'm glad I didn't get pulled over shotgun that was all bloody had to uh, clean it off in the stream last night and uh, me all bloody what were you doing so we, and uh, all I did is I'd take little five minute cat naps along the, the road when I couldn't stay awake anymore. All right, so we're back on the road again. Um, heard that there was a powwow in Fairbanks, Alaska. So I've decided to head on up there and uh, check it out. I've always wanted to see a powwow and it's about a good day drive away. Of course, it's 5.30 at night and I'm just leaving Dawson. Um, found out that the dumpster got closed down right after I went through. Uh, you know, I went through in rains. I don't know if I caught that on camera, but um, boy, this just isn't the best view. Finally figured out I can turn my little viewer around. Huh. Anyway, so the dumpster highway rot washed out after uh, I went through, and then also one of the cables broke on one of the ferries, so uh, people couldn't get through at all. I got real lucky that I. Uh, took off and blessed that I took off when I did to uh, make it down here. Ate m almost all the caribou. Oh, I figured out to put caribou in everything. Uh, it was pretty cool. Caribou in tomato soup, uh, caribou in cream corn. <laughs> anyway, so it was it was cool. And uh, off to more adventures to see what uh, what goes on now. I uh, hope I make it across the border. Border's okay. Uh, again, a little bit of a risk going back into Canada again after I, I leave it. But it's worth it. It's an adventure. What the heck? All right. See ya. <laughs> okay, there we go. I have no idea. I think, yeah, today's Sunday. So, uh, the second Sunday I've been on the road, just, so I've been on the road just under two weeks, and I'm heading out of Fairbanks, Alaska, after, uh, being at a powwow for three days, 
and uh, what an amazing time. I mean, they uh, they accepted me into their circle uh, as a veteran. They pay a lot of uh, homage to, to veterans. Uh, the reason being is because that uh, you know they used to honor their warriors. You know, their first in part of the grand uh, opening ceremony would be their uh, their warriors. I'm driving. You can probably tell that. Of course, you can. Uh, and and now we are the warriors uh, of today. So, uh, you know, a very cool thing. Every single day when they had the grand uh, entry, it was uh, led off by the veterans. Okay, I'm not just gonna sit here on my butt for three days. I want to help out. So I started talking to the guy in the sound booth, and uh, actually, actually ended up uh, running sound most of the time for the thing. So at least I was helping out, you know. And uh, three or four of the little kids. There's just one kid. Probably be some uh, pictures you'll see of him in regalia, full regalia, gorgeous regalia. And uh, I don't know, he's about 11, something like that. Anyway, he decided I was awesome, and so did his two or three uh, little brothers. And so they were climbing all over me for the rest of the time and messing with me and everything. They just became buds and uh, became <clears throat> pretty close to uh, one of the elder uh, women of the lodge. She's just a sweetheart. Uh, and to several of the, the dancers and everything. So, uh, extremely cool time. Let's see, uh, yesterday we had a potlatch which is great because that's the, uh, it's a dinner. We had moose, they'd gone out and shot a moose. They had moose meat and moose soup and uh, some other stuff to go with it. And that's where the uh, younger uh, kids serve the uh, elders, of which I was, everybody, every adult was considered part of. So that was also uh, awesome to be in that tradition. Uh, the Lakota were there and uh, had their naming ceremony. So it was fascinating to watch, you know, and then all the different prayers and the, the cleansings and all the different types of dances and everything, which I participated in a little bit. You know, was uh, invited to participate in all the time, but I was running sound. That's my excuse. I'm sticking with it. For the closing of the powwow, I was releasing of the eagle. This eagle has been harmed and was nursed back to health. Active duty service bringing it in. Veterans lining the area. there, uh, which means the team of drummers, and uh, even from as far away as Montana, and of course we're in Fairbanks, Alaska, so that's quite a distance, representing uh, some of the different nations, and uh, I actually spoke there, brought greetings from uh, one of their First Nations sisters uh, in the Yukon that I met, that was lamenting uh, in Dawson there, the, the gal that told me about the thing, she was lamenting that she couldn't go, so I that I went to into her uh, stead to bear greetings. So it was kind of cool. And uh, that's it, helped tear down. Now it's 8.05, I've been on the road for maybe an hour. You know, I was chatting with a whole bunch of them afterwards. And uh, I'll just drive as far as I can tonight. I'm not sure when I hit the border. Um, I need to caffeine up quite a bit though, I'm pretty tired. Few minutes ago, they're they're thick right now. 
had him going a few minutes ago that was going 25, 30 miles an hour. And he's like right in front of the truck. There he is. Well, it looks like I'm driving into one heck of a lightning storm. So I uh, pulled over. I figured I don't really like doing so with a, uh, a six gallon gas bomb on the top of the truck. So I emptied the, uh, the jerry can, one of them. The only one that had gas entered into my gas tank. Now I still have two bombs up top, being they're empty cans, so they're full of gas fumes. But at least if I do get hit, happen to, which you know probably isn't going to happen, but that won't be that big of a deal as having gasoline spread everywhere as well. Although my propane cans are up there, I guess. So well, that'll still be a heck of a boom. But the chances you take. I noticed my luggage carrier is completely shredded up there. That thing's toast. I lost the uh, the light jack couple thousand miles ago or so I just I don't know something caught it and it's totally just ripped off completely so yeah part of the fun of the miles now let's get into that uh, storm and make it happen it's pretty amazing this is the uh, start of the Icefields Parkway. My uh, route today towards home takes me right through Banff National Park. Not on the near the Alabaster Glacier. It's about 9.30 at night. You can hear the wind is just whipping. There's a storm coming. Can't see how dark it is with this, but it's dark. So I'm gonna get off of here soon. Get back to some shelter. But for right now, it's absolutely amazing. Absolutely gorgeous to be on at a time when nobody else is here. Nobody's around. Just me and the elements. 100 years from now, this will be, well, so far back, you won't even be able to see it. Just a few years ago, is further than it is now further forward. It's certainly melting. Something that's been here for, God, thousands of years. Gonna be going away, along with a lot of them. And now I'm gonna do the same thing before I get caught in a storm. So a 5,000 mile road trip up into the Arctic Circle, hiking the tundra, up to Inuvik, the Dempster Highway, Tuk to Yuktuk, all parts in between, and then on over to Fairbanks for a three day uh, powwow with the uh, natives there, and on over here to Lake Louise, Canada. Incredible trip, time to head home. 